I am Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. This is part one of our back to school series. Now I'll be showing you today how to make a fabric folder using fat quarters. There's a couple other projects behind me that will be in separate videos so be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you won't miss a video ever. There's the pennant banner which is really cute to decorate your home, the kids um, classroom maybe um, or even their bedroom and then these cute little um, pencil toppers made out of shabby shapes. So let me get started with today's project again which is a fabric folder. These are really in fashion right now. I've been seeing them all over on social media. Let me show you here. There's just this is a standard fit standard eight and a half by eleven papers. It just makes um, it makes learning fun and I know when my kids were little that the more fun stuff they had um, for school, the more they got excited about learning. So I do think it's a worthy thing to make fun stuff for our kids for school because it just makes going to school even that more fun. So let me show you how to get started on the project. You will need two uh, fat quarters. If you don't have fat quarters, don't worry. You need two pieces of fabric that are 20 by 13. It just fits fat quarters really well because they're about 21 to 22 inches, so, so it's ideal for that. And of course, on the Shabby Fabrics website under pre-cuts, you can always click on fat quarter sets and there's, I mean, so much to choose from. You will absolutely find something that, that you or your kids will love. So get two pieces of fabric, 20 by 13, and you'll also want to get a fusible interfacing. And I like the heavy weight on this project, the, the decor bond they call it, or decorator bond. So it's, it gives it some oomph here because you don't want this thing to be, you know, completely floppy. You want to have some rigidity to it. The other thing you'll need is a 3 8 inch wide ribbon in coordinating colors, and that's going to be cut to 13 and a quarter inches. Um, we will have these measurements on the free download um, portion of our website. That's at the very bottom of the home page. If you've watched our other DIY videos, you already know what's down there. But if you're new, just the bottom of the home page, free downloads, click there. And this will be called the fabric folder and we'll have these dimensions for you. So you don't have to worry about that right now. Um, get your two fabrics cut out to the 20 by 13 as well as the fusible interfacing again in the heavyweight or the decor bond. And for the ribbon, 13 and a quarter. You'll go ahead following the manufacturer's instructions for whatever fusible interfacing you're using and you're going to iron that to the back of whatever fabric you want to be on the outside of your fabric folder, which in this case, you know, we've chosen these cute little apples, back to school theme. Once that's done, you'll go ahead and turn that over. We'll put the lining, what I call the lining, aside for the moment and you'll put your ribbon here and this is where you're going to need this ruler. The, the ribbon needs to be put in a very specific place so that when the flap is closed, it keeps it, it keeps it closed. So you can see why that needs to be in just the right place because if it's too low, it's going to miss that flap. So you're going to want to measure one and a quarter inches down and go ahead and mark. I'm using the friction pen. Just a little bit of a mark is all I need. And I'm going to put my ribbon up there. And I'm just going to mark on the other side of my ribbon. That's kind of a lane where the ribbon will sit. Now let me explain to you why is the ribbon a little bit longer than the actual fabric. As you can see, this is quite a bit of bulk here by the time you get all the layers of the fabric and the interfacing. And so having that little bit of that extra quarter of an inch makes it so that this isn't super tight. So that's the only reason we went a little bit um, wider on the, on the ribbon as far as the 13 and a quarter versus the 13. Now what you're going to want to do is go ahead and pin these in place as you would expect. We'll pin that in, in its place and this one as well. So those aren't going to shift on you. Because the next thing that we're going to do is we'll go ahead and layer the, the, the inside portion, or in this case, the yellow polka dot right sides together. And you will go ahead and you'll, in fact, I'll even mark it so you can see exactly. About there, you wanna leave a pretty good opening 
especially with really stiff interfacing, it's tough to turn this right side out. So you want to leave yourself a nice big opening. Go ahead, you're going to pin all the way around as you would normally expect, all the way around. Start here, reinforce quarter inch seams all the way around to here. Again, reinforce. You'll get, that will bring you to this stage. We did that ahead of time. Save us some time on camera. So you'll get to this stage right here. You see the opening? And we went ahead and reinforced. Now, one thing that definitely helps to reduce bulk in the corners is go ahead and either take scissors or a rotary cutter and just clip at 45 on those corners. It just makes it lie a little bit smoother. Okay, so as you would suspect, the next thing to do is simply turn this right side out, smooth it out as well as you can, and you would go ahead and press. Now, of course, that would leave you an opening here. You would just tuck that down a quarter of an inch, press that, and then what you will have next is that whole thing will be ready to be top stitched. So let's move that out of the way as well. So you would go ahead, in fact, let me show you on this side. You'll go ahead, you can even start with that opening because this is where the opening was. We just tucked that under, pressed it, sewed, so less than a quarter of an inch now, say an eighth of an inch, all the way around. When you come, when it comes to the ribbon, just move it out of the way, continue around, again, move this out of the way and finish. Then what you'll need to do so you can see what we're doing here. I'll show you so that you definitely understand how this process works. So let's put that like that. Okay, so I want you to see what it looks like because it's a little bit hard to visualize it. Since this is the part that has the ribbon and the flap's going to tuck under that, make sure it's this portion that you bring up. And again, you'll want to go ahead and measure with your ruler because standard paper is eight and a half. We're going to want to fold that up eight and a half. So about right there. And you could go ahead. You could even you could even press that if you want. You'll go ahead and pin. And when we take this to the sewing machine, as you can see that that ribbon's going to be in the way. Just move that ribbon out of the way. You can just move it over here like this. So, of course, you're going to want to have a pretty uh, short stitch length so that doesn't come undone. And you'll repeat that on this side. Close your flap and you'll be all done. Now, to have it even more special for whoever is the lucky recipient of the fabric folder, you can use our shabby shape monograms and you can go ahead and either spell out their entire name or just put their little uh, initial in the corner. So I hope you enjoyed part one of our schoolhouse series.